Hi everyone, I hope you're really well. Welcome or indeed welcome back to the channel. If you are new, don't forget to hit subscribe because today we have got one of my absolute favourite types of videos to make and it is a foundation first impressions video. If you are new to my foundation first impressions videos, just a quick bit of information up front. I will just be applying the foundation on its own. I won't use primers or setting powders, and there's a couple of reasons for that really. The first of which is I know the chances are you guys probably don't have exactly the same products that I have, so I want to try and keep things as simple as possible. And secondly, I want to be able to test this foundation on its own just to see how it performs without messing with other products because I personally would love to find a foundation where you don't need lots of other products for it to work. You never know, we might well find one one day. And in terms of application, I have got my trusty Zoeva 104 buffing brush and my L'Oreal sponge here as well, which is damp and ready to go. These are always the tools that I use for my foundation first impressions videos. I'll generally do one half of my face with the brush, the other half with the sponge, depending on how it goes, because obviously I've not used this foundation before and I might find that one application method definitely works better than the other. In terms of the foundation that I'm testing out today, I am so excited to give this foundation a go and I've been sitting on this sample for such a long time. I had an email from For Unique quite some time ago now saying, hey, do you want to try the new YSL foundation? You can get a sample of it and I was like, of course I do, and a lot of the lighter shades had already gone, so this was amongst one of the lighter shades that was still available, but I'm hoping that I've done a good job in matching it from swatches online. The new foundation that YSL came out with is called All Hours, and I keep getting the name of that wrong. I think they should have probably chosen something else, because I keep wanting to say All Nighter, or All Dayer, or something other than All Hours, but it is the YSL All Hours Foundation that I'll be trying today. If you've not heard of this foundation or you just want a quick reminder about what it's all about, let's have a quick look on the YSL website. We'll read a little bit more about it and its claims and then we will pop some on my face. So here we have the official yslbeauty.co.uk website and this is their new all hours liquid foundation. As you can see, it's getting quite a lot of good reviews. In fact, a lot of five star reviews there actually by the looks of it and lots of four star reviews. So that's a positive sign. And they're describing it as a liquid foundation that has you covered for endless nights, own the night and the day with a matte foundation for a flawless complexion which stays put for 24 hours. A rich level of fine pigments means full coverage with a flawless even finish without a mask-like effect. So that sounds really nice. The high coverage foundation's innovative formula is waterproof and transfer resistant. Well, that is definitely exciting because I quite often end up with foundation on my phone, which is gross. With no compromise on comfort and no need to touch up, the oil-free formula gives a matte look throughout the day and helps reduce the appearance of pores. And then they go on to suggest that you use their blending sponge and their primer if you want increased wear and hold. It's also been enriched with a skincare complex and UV filter, leaving skin looking fresh and smooth. It's supposed to be suitable for all skin types, including sensitive skin. It's dermatologically tested, non-comedogenic, and it's an SPF of 20, which is pretty good. In terms of application, ignoring the primer step because I'm not gonna be using primer with this one right now. It's suggesting that I use a sponge for full coverage flawless finish, but I will still use a brush as well just to see if that makes a difference. And then they just go on to suggest a few of their other products as well. So seems pretty straightforward. I don't want to ignore the fact that we've got the very beautiful YouTuber Kashal here as well, which is really exciting that she's on the website. So just out of interest, let's find my perfect match, shall we? Okay, so I would say I'm probably more light than I am fair, and I'm probably more that one, and I do have a cool undertone, but just out of interest, so the veins on my wrist are blue and purple, yet yeah, mine are bright blue. 
Whereas if yours are more green and blue, then you're neutral. And if your veins are green, then you've got a warm undertone. Mine couldn't be more blue if they tried. So we'll go for cool. Interestingly, I am pretty sure that that is the shade that I actually chose. So I'm officially excited. Right, so fingers crossed this is going to be a good match for me. When I looked at swatches online, it did look like a fairly safe bet. So fingers crossed, because I've not even opened this yet. I've not swatched it or anything. So let's get you zoomed in a little bit and we'll put some on my face. Please excuse the state of my hair. I'm still experimenting with round brushing it. And when it was freshly done, which wasn't all that long ago, it looked quite nice. And now it's already going a bit frizzy because basically I just need a lot more practice. Right, let's give it a bit of a shake up. I'm so excited. Oh, okay, it's actually got a little like spatula thing. So that is exciting. Okay, maybe let's swatch it first. So it does actually look fairly pale, really. It looks paler than what the swatches online looked. I think I'll just leave it on my hand to dry down and we'll see if anything interesting happens, like whether it oxidizes or anything. I think I'm gonna go with brush first. It's quite cool, it's like I'm painting my face. God. A little bit does seem to go quite a long way on this little spatula thing. Whoa. Okay. It seems to have pretty good coverage for quite a small amount. Mmm, that's an interesting fragrance. Um, it's really sweet, kind of watermelon scent, which wasn't really expecting, but I'm not complaining. I've definitely smelt worse foundations and things. It's blending really nicely. I do feel like I need a bit more down here and I've not done my forehead at all yet. I don't actually have too much going on on my skin at the moment to cover up, which is quite nice. Although you probably saw that I do actually have a bit of a spot here. It is pulling on the brush ever so slightly, but it's not too bad. It is blending okay with the brush. All of the hyperpigmentation I've got on my forehead just seems to have been airbrushed away really easily and quickly. Although I don't know if it's gonna set down a bit, but can you see how glowy it's looking at the moment? I think that is probably half of my face done. It's evened everything out really, really nicely, but I am a little bit concerned about this level of glow. It's certainly not looking particularly matte, and I didn't really use that much either, so I will be keeping an eye on that. Hopefully it will dry down a bit, but certainly in terms of the level of coverage and how natural it's looking, so far, so good. Okay, so let's give this sponge a go now. They did say it should give a higher level of coverage with a sponge. I can't get over the smell of this. It's unlike any foundation sort of scent I've ever had before. It's really perfumey, but it's actually quite nice. It is very melony. So again, blending really quickly and nicely. I do really like how it's looking in my pore sort of area because I do have quite bad pores either side of my nose and I can still see them, you know, I don't think any makeup will necessarily completely obliterate everything, but it does look quite nice and natural. It just seems to smooth over and airbrush everything like really effortlessly. I can still see some hyperpigmentation peeking through, so I might see if I can build it up again in a second. But that is what seems to be a fairly light layer on both sides of my face. It's looking a bit pale in the viewfinder. In real life, I do think it looks a little bit better, but of course, you know, I will include all of my flash photo tests and all that kind of stuff, just so that you can get a really good idea of how it actually looks in real life. 
I think in terms of application, what I would probably prefer to do, because it does take a little while to build up with a sponge, like most things do, is I'd probably very quickly put some on with a brush and then maybe go over with a second layer with a sponge just to build it up in a few areas because it did work quite nicely with the brush. It did blend really quite quickly and it only pulled on it just a tiny bit. I'm gonna build it up a little bit more on the sponge side just because I don't think the coverage is quite up to the same level as the brush side right now. Okay, that seems to be a little bit better. In terms of the glowiness on the first side that I did, it's still definitely there. It's calmed down a bit, but I am concerned about that. Whether it's going to take as long as it takes for me to do the rest of my makeup and it sets down a bit more, I don't know, but yeah. It's definitely healthy looking, but when you're an oily skinned person, the initial glow factor when it's like this just makes you a bit nervous. I'm just going to try building it up in a couple of problematic areas just to see how that looks. So I've got this scar here, I've got a bit of hyperpigmentation there, we'll also have a go with the other hyperpigmentation too, this spot and this horrible area here which is my least favourite part of my face and it's my least favourite part to cover as well because it's quite tricky. I get a lot of hormonal breakouts. I'm just going to try and do a bit of stippling just to see how that goes. Stippling is working really nicely. It's blending out beautifully. I could probably build this up to full coverage but I'm a bit nervous about putting too much more product on my face so I'm pretty happy with the level of coverage that I've got right now. It seems to have dealt with that spot on my chin really quite nicely. And the scar on my cheek as well. Okay, I am pretty happy with how things are looking right now in terms of coverage. It does look quite natural. It's just the glow factor, as usual, that I'm quite nervous about. So what I'll do is I will get on with the rest of my makeup, which may will take about 10 minutes or so. Then I will check back in with you. We'll see how things are looking and if indeed it has actually dried down at all. Okay, this foundation would definitely benefit from a powder right now. Oh my goodness, it's dried down a bit but it's still quite sticky to the touch and quite shiny still as well. So I really want to put some powder on, but of course I'm not going to do that because I want to see how this lasts throughout the day without the addition of anything else to skew the results basically. So I will save experimenting with this until I do my update video after I've played around with it using different products, but yeah, a powder on top of this would definitely help things because I actually think this is a beautiful looking foundation. It gives a really lovely level of coverage that looks quite natural. It hasn't clung to any dryness at all, which is particularly hard for this area here on me. So that's a big win. And it's just covered everything really nicely. But because of that stickiness, it was really difficult to blend out my blusher. I had to do that really quite carefully. And oh my goodness, can we just talk about the oxidization of this foundation? Look at the color difference. I think this is more the color I was expecting to see from the swatches I saw online. This is dried down quite a bit, but obviously you can see that there's still a degree of glow going on there. I will do a fresh swatch next to this just so that we can see how much it's oxidized by. So if you're going to a department store or anywhere where you're looking to pick this foundation up, just be conscious of the fact that it does look like it oxidizes quite a lot. So you might want to experiment around with a few different shades before you properly make your mind up. Anyway, that's it from me for the moment. The next time you see me, it will be the end of the day and I'll let you know how it's worn and we'll see what the coverage is like and if it's actually managed to be matte at all and actually control my oils in any way. 
shape or form. Okay, so it's the end of the day. I have been wearing this foundation for about seven hours now, which is my kind of average amount of wear time, I suppose, on a non-work day. And I think you can guess what I am going to say, or maybe some of it anyway. You can probably see the situation that's going on in my face right now, because this happened really quickly. We're talking like maybe an hour into me wearing it, and I have been so good, I've not touched it up at all. I really wanted to, but I didn't, because I didn't want to interfere with it. I wanted to see what the longevity was like, because yes, I have gone unbelievably glowy. I was already glowy from the get-go, but I just wanted to see if it would break the foundation down at all. And I don't think actually in the most part that it has. So that is a positive that I will be clinging onto. All in all, coverage wise, it's not bad. There's definitely still a decent amount of coverage there. It's worn off a bit on that spot that I covered up earlier on, but in general, it's still pretty well covered. The bit that I had over my scar is still hanging on in there really quite well actually and my hyperpigmentation is probably showing through a bit more. But on the whole, you can definitely still tell that I have got a full face of makeup on, putting to one side the fact that I'm also a beacon of shine right now. <laughs> because of the fact that I have been really shiny for the most part of the day, it's made the foundation feel quite heavy, which can quite often happen if you have oily skin. I'm sure you've tried foundations out where something's happened, your oils have just come through a little bit too enthusiastically, and your face just feels a bit uncomfortable and like you're terrified of putting anything near it because it's just gonna transfer. One of the claims for this foundation was the fact that it was transfer proof. I'm not convinced. I am pretty sure that if I touched my face with anything right now, it's just going to transfer straight off. So I don't know what to make of that claim. I don't know whether it's reacting with my moisturizer, but I have used a pretty unexciting moisturizer. It's a moisturizer I've used with lots of other foundations and it's certainly not had this kind of a reaction. But this is exactly why I want to do my foundation update videos because in a couple of weeks time, after I've tested this out using various different things, I just want to see what the deal was, if this situation can be saved at all, because all in all, I actually really like how this foundation looks. The shininess to one side, we'll, we'll ignore that for one minute. The actual coverage is still really nice. I think it looks very natural. It doesn't cling to any dryness at all or any texture, which is fantastic. It's also not settled into fine lines, which is unfortunately another thing that I am now having to take into consideration when it comes to foundations, because some of them do settle into some of my deeper lines, particularly ones that I've got randomly across my forehead. I'll get to the end of the day and there'll usually be a little gathering of foundation in my wrinkles, which is just lovely. But there's nothing like that at all going on. I think it looks very healthy, very natural. So I am actually still quite excited about this one. I've not completely written it off. I'm looking forward to definitely trying it with my beloved Coty Airspun translucent powder because I think that on its own could possibly save this situation. I've also got a primer that I'm thinking might help it as well. So there's definitely room for experimentation. I am excited to see what I can get out of this in terms of a look that's actually doable for me because some people really try and achieve this level of glow, but as you've probably heard me say before, I am not one of those people. I just get a little bit paranoid about the fact that it's gonna transfer and what it looks like, I suppose, ultimately, because it doesn't feel very nice and it's just super shiny. It's, it's not a look that I'm going for. In terms of how it's feeling, it's still feeling quite sticky to the touch, quite tacky 
which is similar to how it felt from the get-go really and that feeling just kind of got worse and worse as the day went on so I have been really conscious of trying not to touch my face too much for fear of moving everything around too much so it's not been the best day in terms of me feeling confident about what makeup is on my face but like I said I've not written this off because I think it definitely has potential there are enough ticks against this foundation in terms of the elements of it that I like that makes me want to experiment with it and I really hope that I can get this to work because I actually think this is probably one of the better foundations I've tried for quite a while just in terms of how it's looking on the whole and how it's covered things really nicely it looks very natural and the fact that I have gone really glowy and oily with it and it's not broken down is something to be quite excited about so I've got at least two products that I want to try this with just to see if this can be helped at all so stay tuned if you want an update on how I've got on with testing this out with other things that usually follows this first impressions video in about two to three weeks or so but I am actually excited even though I am mega shiny. So that's it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If this is a foundation you're considering trying out for yourself, if you did indeed find it helpful, I would really appreciate a thumbs up down below because it does really help support my channel. And if you are new and would like to subscribe to see more content like this from me in the future, I will pop a button just here so you can click it and get notified of new content as and when it gets uploaded. And if you've not seen my last video, I will pop a link to that one just up here so you can click it and check that one out too. Anyway, I hope you're all really well and I will see you again soon. Bye.